Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum madam. Okay, uh, we are, today we have Mr. Mahat Pureshi with us, uh, the author of uh, book Buried Tales. Okay, let's uh, know about his book and his uh, work. Okay, um, uh, tell me please uh, about yourself. When did you start writing your book? Well, uh, first of all, thank you very much, madam, for having me uh, here with you on your YouTube You're channel. You're welcome. To uh, share the stage with you people. Um, so basically, I'm a doctor by profession. And uh, mm -hmm. if I talk about writing, I've been writing as far as memory takes me back. Uh, basically, starting from the very early school days to up to the FSC level, where I can first trace back uh, the real memory of actually uh, going into creative writing. Um, so I still remember it was an FSC when I first wrote, uh, wrote a story about, uh, it was a comedy and a humor, basically, about a guy who is very much afraid mm -hmm. of his wife and the way he celebrates the day of Eid. Uh, so that kind of really made the rounds uh, around the college with the, the staff and the teachers really enjoying the story that I wrote. Uh, but that again, till that time, it wasn't much of a serious, uh, uh, you know, hobby of mine. I would write every now and then, but then I won't. Um, so after that, uh, the, the phase of FSC and into the medical college is when I started to, uh, you know, mature a bit and I would rather observe and see um, quite some emotional happening, happenings around me and incidents. So with time, I decided to, you know, uh, write those uh, things on paper um, and give them a line of a storyline. So uh, that was the way I started off writing. And within due uh, time, you know, we had one story, then two and multiple others. And eventually a collection of 12 stories, which uh, have been later compiled into uh, this book that we've uh, authored. All right. Okay, tell me, why did you choose this title, Buried Tales? What was the reason? Well, well it wasn't easy, I'll be honest. Um, uh, Buried Tales, basically, uh, in the initial stages when I wrote these books, as I say, that every story in this book is um, a representative, uh, representation of an, uh, of an emotional happening that happened in true life, uh, which, of course, the story has been altered, uh, a bit of fiction has been added, and so on. Uh, with time, I kind of felt a calling, an inner calling, that I need to put these stories uh, on paper out for the world to read. And eventually, when I compiled them in a form of a collection of short stories into a book, so I thought it is appropriate to title it as Buried Tales. Right. Okay, what were the challenges while completing uh, your book? Um, well, they were multiple. Uh, number one, uh, keeping in mind the profession that I'm in, uh, time was the biggest challenge, I'll be honest. Um, mm. and then, uh, th th there's a problem with uh, having a writer's block, basically. So when you write a book, you need to be free up here and, and you need to have the creative side of you out. Um, but whenever you're preoccupied, you are busy, it, it, it gets very difficult to write. Uh, so time yes. was a challenge. Uh, writer's block was a challenge. And then again... Mm -hmm. uh, the other challenge that I faced was to basically uh, get someone to guide me on to how to basically uh, proofread the stories that I, uh, you know, author and how to further compile them and give them shape of a book. And that is where, of course, you guys, uh, Dastan, came into play. Okay, uh, you talk about uh, writer, uh, ri writing blogs, writer blog. So how did you deal with it? All right. So, so uh, one way of dealing it was uh, to go on vacations. So basically, I would go on vacations, oh. and uh, whenever I had my leave or vacation schedule, that is when I would do most of my uh, creative writing because that is when you are not preoccupied. You're free. Uh, you have the luxury of uh, you know taking it slow and going into the creative phase uh, of your thoughts. Um, that was one way. But then again, you see. Um, you have to find something to inspire you. Um, and this book is basically dedicated to my late grandfather, Group Captain Niaz Ahmed uh, Sufi. He was an author himself of multiple books. Um, so the inspiration okay. basically was to uh, make sure that I author the book and I compile it within his lifetime to see, uh, which of course I couldn't, uh, you know, but uh, that was something to start off with. And uh, because it was in the middle when he passed away, uh, it was an added responsibility on me to kind of uh, see it through. Um, so that was the inspiration behind it. Right. OK, which section of your book is the most interesting and why? All right, which, uh, well, I would say rather all parts of the book are interesting. Um, but mm -hmm. if you ask 
is something that is quite close to my heart i believe um yeah. uh, well one of the stories is a broken sword um that is quite close to my heart it is a story of a young boy who's been uh, given wings uh, wings to dream to hope uh, to try to strive for something to be in life and later on he's uh, been clipped off those wings by the very same person who gave him that hope Uh, so that is an interesting story. Um, the first story that has been uh, inspired by an afsana written by my late grandfather, Dr. Captain uh, Niaz Ahmed Sufi, um, a mother's prayer that itself is a very interesting story. It 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 actually is based on a true happening uh, of two war veterans, one a Pakistani uh, pilot and uh, the other being the arch enemy, an Indian pilot, where they met somewhere in the Western States. Um, one of the stories quite close to my heart it is uh, regarding the iron lady uh, the iron lady basically highlights the character of gulnara bibi who uh, you know uh, is quite a true character that we often see in our society here every now and then but then we choose to ignore it uh, her struggles mm-hmm. her husband uh, you know fights terminal cancer and how she kind of keeps her space and her children in the society while battling not only disease but also financial instability uh, so these stories are quite close to my heart uh, but then again every story is a representation of something very emotional so i would say all of them are quite interesting and dear to me yeah okay um, please read us your favorite story from the book all right so um, as i said the broken sword is something that's quite close mm-hmm. to my heart So I'm going to read uh, the last one, one and a half pages of that uh, story. Sure. So I'll begin then. Do you know what your name means? Asked the young officer as Saf looked at him with a blank face, still struggling to trust anyone after all he had been through. A sword, he said. Sharp, strong, and unbreakable, exactly like you. He continued. Saf, yeah. who was. the baron of confidence expectations and aspirations to amount to something in life gradually started to comprehend the meaning of dreams he had begun to hope he had a chance at life a world where he saw only evil was inhabited by good as well he started to show promise in the orphanage school working extra hours to catch up on the years of education he had lost to trauma and violence one day The visits of his sponsors stopped. The man Saf longed to meet never turned up again. Nobody told him where the young man went. He often asked his mistress at the orphanage, but she'd suddenly change the topic of their conversation to distract him, hoping to help him forget the young officer. The officer had given Saf a sword strength to fight for his place in life. He had sharpened his mind like the blade's edge to cut through the miseries and work hard. but the sword that was never meant to be uh, but the sword that was never meant to break had been damaged by the very man who had set out to forge it saf was never enthusiastic about anything ever again and amounted to only what could manage a small tea stall in the wild suburbs of the city saf was given wings with the hope to fly one day and then was immediately deprived of them I could only manage to crawl after that he said narrating his dark memories to Dr Naveed Promise me you'll never take away the wings you give to children of your orphanage promise me that Kareem will not cry, will not crawl but fly he begged as tears rolled down his cheeks I promise said Dr Naveed as he got up and tightly hugged Saf As Dr Naveed drove off back into the city's pulsating heart far away from the quiet cold suburbs he drove slowly the burden that he had thought was off his shoulders and the purpose of life that he thought had been completed suddenly felt incomplete he knew it was him who once turned up at the orphanage to sponsor a child it was he who made a financial commitment for the sake of welfare which he later realized he couldn't afford he made saf think he could fly and left him only to crawl Naveed did not dare to tell Saf it was he who gave him his darkest demons but promised to never let the same happen to his son it wasn't fame power or yearning for respect that fueled dr vasee dr naveed's ambitions it was regret it was guilt as i sat at the table on the side eavesdropping as the whole drama unfolded 
watching Saf as he kissed his seven-year-old son Kareem with hope rekindled in his eyes, knowing that Dr. Naveed was too pious a man not to uphold his word. Little did he know he was a victim to the same man who he thought of his as his savior. So that is from uh, the book, A Broken Sword, uh, the story of uh, Saf, Kareem, and his savior, Dr. Naveed. Great. Okay, let's uh, talk about Dastan. How do you find Dastan through source or any uh, reference? All right. So, uh, as I said, uh, you know, the challenges in writing this book were not only mm -hmm. uh, time, uh, writer's block, but also finding someone mm -hmm. to guide me. Uh, through the whole process of uh, publishing the book. And uh, that is where Dastan came through. And I found about them through a friend of mine, uh, Dr. Hamidur Rahman is his name. Uh, you know, if he's mm -hmm. watching, I'd like to wave hi to him. Um, <laughs> but a dermatologist and uh, an aesthetic uh, physician as well. Uh, so he basically linked me up with Dastan. And uh, with time, I got to talk with the CEO of Dastan, uh, Mr. Umar. And from there on, mm -hmm. I just these are the guys I want to work with uh, for publishing my first book. Uh, so how was your experience with Dastan? Uh, well, it's been wonderful, I'll be honest. Um, I believe that uh, the way they've guided me, um, you know, and guided me through, uh, despite my naive questions, um, <laughs> not knowing anything about how to publish or to proceed with the whole uh, program. So they've taken me, uh, you know, uh, by the finger, step by step throughout the whole process. And uh, this is here we are just a few weeks away from the book launch. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, what uh, can we improve in our process? Well, Any solution? Know, maybe charge less. <laughs> 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 well, I think, uh, well, I think you know, uh, it's, it's been a wonderful experience rather, uh, you know, I don't think mm. that there's any way Dastan can further improve on it, uh, but then improve we shall uh, every day. Um, I think it's it's a wonderful platform for young writers who are new to the world of publishing. Um, it's always good to have a mentor who's you know taken so many people through this process, and now they've taken me as well. So if anybody asks me, Dastan is the platform to go to um, and publish your first book. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, um, tell me what message you would like to give uh, young writers? Well, keep writing. Um, that is what I'd say. Uh, basically, mm -hmm. uh, the problem with young writers is that uh, they keep, they're kind of too cruel to themselves, you see. Um, we are in the habit of reading quite uh, renowned writers, I'd say. Uh, people yeah. who have made a name for themselves in the world of uh, literature, who actually write for the sake of living. I mean, for people like mm -hmm. me, it's a hobby. It's it's something that yeah. we do at interest. And so, so we basically keep the benchmark quite high. And then we gauge our capabilities with those of mm -hmm. those writers who have achieved so much in the world of literature. So don't be cruel to yourself. You know, you need to understand that it is a world of literature that is dominated by giants at the moment. So we are only taking baby steps in that world. So we are bound to mm -hmm. We are bound to fall. Uh, but then again, we must have the courage to get back up and keep writing. And uh, every writer started from where we are starting. And eventually, we will reach that stage where, you know, we, we have set our benchmark too, inshallah. So keep writing. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to be judged. Don't be afraid to be, um, you know, uh, read by the world. Uh, it's part of learning. This is how everybody grows. So keep writing. That's nice. Nice message. Thank you so much, sir, for your time. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much. It's a, it's a, it was a pleasure. Okay. Bye. Thank you, madam. Thank you.